You're watching me. You're watching me. You're watching me. You're watching me. You're watching me and Dominique on Aussie Beach TV. Footy versus freedom. What is your name and where are you from? My name's Jack Russell, I live out in the back of Ipswich, mate. My name's Lachlan Dalby, I'm from Brisbane. Local. Kevin Price from Townsville. Uh, Carolina from Sweden. Cornelius from Denmark. And I'm Maria from Denmark as well. Uh, my name is Ben and I'm uh, from here. Uh, Barbara um, and Colin. Colin. My name is Parag and I live in Annalee. In the news this week, there has been football grand finals. Have you been enjoying the competition and how did your team go? Oh mate, I love the footy and the bunnies are in the final mate. Can you believe it? The bunnies made the grand final. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait for this weekend. Can you tell us what else has been in the news this week? No. Tony yeah. Abbott probably. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, I haven't really checked the news this week, actually. We've just spent a week in Kearns doing absolutely nothing, yeah. so oh, haven't been checking up on the news. <laughs> oh, well, obviously there's the anti-terrorism laws which have passed the Senate now, which are frankly quite scary. The idea that somehow we're going to give away rights that took us centuries to gain, the deaths are for a passing uh, security threat, which happens to be conveniently timed with a massive slump in Abbott's polls. And now that to me say, um, uh, says something about uh, the way in which we can be manipulated using fear and really quite base tactics. So this week in the news, terrorism has been high in the agenda. What are your thoughts on the latest developments in the Middle East and how does this affect you and your family? Um, well, last week we were at a big camp which is like Seventh-day Adventist like, uh, gathering and we actually got like, we had security guards come in because of the threat and they were just telling us all to be wary and stuff and you know it's it's actually a real thing in life like like we have freedom but soon enough like people are actually going to come and take it away from us that's what i believe well, it doesn't affect me and my family at all because it's obviously it's all that far away but um what can you say so we get basket case over there glad i'm not over there yeah same i'm glad i'm not over there it doesn't really affect me directly but who knows it could be anything the thing is that what's been happening in the Middle East has been happening there for years and really we're playing right into their hands. While I uh, totally agree that something needs to happen about ISIS, the problem is that it's, it isn't simply action against ISIS that is happening. What we have here in Australia is that we have a massive uh, fear campaign in which Muslims are being uh, targeted to a greater and greater extent. I mean, uh, everybody, just about everybody nowadays has Facebook and if you watch the absolutely obscene amount of racial hatred which has been developing. It is ridiculous, it's disgusting. Um, and so this plays into their hands because of course, what do they want? They want uh, something to really feed their cause. They want people, Muslims in particular, around the world to feel outraged at what's happening. Oh mate, it's been going crazy. That bloody ISIS is out of control, mate. I know terrorism. I'm scared shitless, mate. I walked down here to South Bank earlier and I saw one of the bins was removed, completely gone. I freaked out, mate. I freaked out there was nowhere to put me rubbish. Oh my God, ISIS are after me, mate. I'm freaking out, mate. Anyhow, mate, I'm a little bit scared and worried about this. So what I've done is I've put extra security on the house. All right, I've double locked all the doors. I bought a nice big dog. It's on, mate. I'm safe now. Well, at least we got the police there to take care of us. The army, the air force, we need them all to secure our borders and stop ISIS getting in, mate. The developments aren't, don't seem to be very good. Uh, uh, it seems that the situation is a little bit out of control, uh, but the effect on me and my family is very limited. So 800 police, 15 people detained, but only one terrorism charge. Was this really a plot to behead a member of the public? And if so, why haven't more charges been laid? Possibly corruption, like, I don't know, I reckon the government's behind it all, like, just, I don't know, hey, who knows? I think these, I, I think uh, many countries are probably overreacting a little bit now, but uh, in the interest of public safety, then maybe 
it is worth it. They're showing a presence. They're showing that they don't allow this and they don't uh, approve of this. So maybe it is worth it. I don't know. Oh, mate, that gives me the heebie-jeebies it does. Whoop. Off with your head, mate. Here in Australia, we don't want that kind of stuff on Australian shores, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want that. I'm pretty scared about it, mate. I don't know what we're going to do. Thank God for ASIO and the federal police for keeping us safe here in this country. Where would we be without them? We'd all be wearing bloody burkas. The new anti-terror laws are likely to be introduced that will give the ACO, or Australian Security Intelligence Organisation, the power to access, modify, copy and delete data on your personal computer, jail journalists and whistleblowers who even unwittingly share national security info on social media, give protection from civil and criminal, criminal liability for ACO officers, and allow access to certain types of surveillance devices without a warrant. How do you feel about all this? Well, it's already been introduced. For a start, we should go apply to ASIO. <laughs> we go He's work for ASIO. Right. <laughs> pictures and everything. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> what do you but think? on a slightly more serious note, uh, there needs to be a borderline of it. Obviously, there's certain things that they need to keep secret or not, but uh, prying into people's personal lives is really not necessary. It's not particularly surprising, considering not only the uh, but current government's uh, history of increasing police powers, um, decreasing um, uh, ability to question those powers, and at the same time increasing the ability to punish uh, um, uh, those who speak in opposition to them. I mean, this is the same government that, that put into place um, a, a new regulation in um, a new regulation in uh, their their employees not being allowed to even anonymously talk against them on Facebook and other social media um, uh, platforms. And it's uh, not a mistake that the last time the Liberal government was in, they had a similar situation where once again we had, um, uh, we had the fear of terrorism attacks used to uh, allow um, detention without charge. You know that you can get five years jail for simply mentioning that you've been questioned by Asia? It's that is one of the laws which is still in place, and so they are seeking to remove the um, the midnight clause on that, which um, which uh, will uh, allow it to be taken out of power. Now this clause has now been in for about eight years, and most people don't even know it's there. You can be given five years jail for simply mentioning that you've been gone for the past three days. Um, and where you've been. How the hell are you supposed to explain to your family without mentioning ASIO questioning that you have just disappeared for a few days? I think that there are enough laws around to um, to deal with any of the um, situations that come up. I think it's ridiculous. Um, we are becoming closer and closer to a fascist country um, where um, we're just being told what to do and all our civil liberties are being taken away from us and people actually don't realise what's going on. Mm. Because they'd rather watch football. So the USA and their allies have been arming, training and funding terrorist groups in Syria to fight the democratically elected Assad government. Even after it was known that these terrorists were committing atrocities such as torture, beheadings and even eating the hearts and livers straight out of their victims. The support continued. Now these same terrorists, or some say rogue mercenaries, fly the ISIS banner with equipment paid for by the West. Were you aware of this and how does this make you feel? Yes, I was aware of it. We've been funding a number of different groups over the course of years. Um, uh, not many people remember now that we actually funded um, uh, the Viet Minh during the Second World War. Uh, the same people we ended up fighting in the Vietnam War. We funded Saddam Hussein. We also um, supported the Mujahideen in Afghanistan throughout the 70s. Um, and so really this a process of uh, constantly uh, f funding smaller and smaller splinter groups in the idea that we're somehow hurting the enemy. The bullshit is that uh, somehow the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And that, to me, is fucked. Aussie Beers TV You watch it, Aussie Beers TV You watch it, Aussie Beers TV so Queensland police have issued a statement saying the public should expect to see heavily armed police and to expect random pat-downs on a stop and frisk policy. Are we seeing early signs of Australia turning into a police state? I don't, I don't think that stuff is going to happen, to be honest. But if it does, I guess, yeah, go for it. That's cool. Police state, yeah, let's go. Cool. I don't mind getting touched up. <laughs>
But these are big burly policemen, man. This is not this is not fun stuff. Um, yeah, whether as with Locke said, whether it's actually happening is open the case. But uh, these things take uh, steps slowly, so it quite possibly could be heading that way. It's happening in America. You increase the powers bit by bit. You get people used to a greater and greater infringements of their personal freedoms. I mean, the idea that um, uh, that you can pat down a total stranger with that no uh, with no warrant, no uh, reason, is uh, quite frankly, it's abhorrent. They, um, uh, it's uh, what else do we have to get used to? Is um, uh, are they going to be able to search our personal belongings? I mean, as it is, they're already allowed to give us a grope in public for literally no reason. So I mean. What are, what are we trying to protect? I've never seen anything like this in my life. Um, I've been doing activism for a number of years in this state, and I come in the I come into the city the day after the terrorism threat was raised to high, and immediately there was Australian Federal Police in squadrons of three patrolling the streets. Bins were welded shut at train stations due to security threats. The the police were telling me that they they're going to start rolling out bag searches, which a few days later after coming in here a couple of times you'd get off the train or you'd, you know, you'd pull in in your car and they'd say yep we've just got to check your bag for security reasons trains have been stopping at Roma Street Station um, for specific police squads that get on the trains to check for bombs and let me remind people that Tony Abbott when the terrorism threat was raised to high his justification for this was we have no specific intelligence of an attack but we do know of people that have the capability and the intent to commit an attack. Benjamin Franklin is quoted saying, people willing to trade their freedom for temporary security deserve neither and will lose both. So what do you think he was trying to say? Uh, I think that Benjamin Franklin was probably a terrorist himself. Maybe he worked for ISIS. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen this quote uh, used in um, connection with uh, NSA in the US where after uh, Snowden came out and uh, showed that um, um, a lot of surveillance is happening on private people and uh, without them knowing it. Um, I think there's a truth to this. I think that uh, we do need to take care that we don't give up our private uh, security and our private uh, our, our right to privacy. It's quite um, about libertarianism, liberty. You can't have security and freedom. You gotta have one or the other. Our freedom, according to most politicians, at least, is the most important thing that we have here in this country. They always say that um, that if the terrorists win, we will lose our freedom, and yet. We are allowing ourselves to be terrorised into giving away our freedoms to higher powers. I mean, really, is that counterproductive or is that just me? Definitely a historic quote. And what I think Benjamin Franklin was getting at was I think that first he recognised the dangers of a government taking away freedoms from the people. I think that he recognised you know, how vulnerable and how easily it is for tyranny to come into a nation if their freedoms have been taken and more importantly he's speaking about not the government taking freedoms from you but you being manipulated so that you give your freedoms over to them even today in america they're building camps that's supposed to be in case a plague comes out nothing to do with the plague it's total control mm. over everybody yeah. that's what the western world wants it wants to totally control you yeah. and by taking away guns your freedom they've got it and until you stand up and have a French style revolution and get rid of Jesuit Abbott, you'll have it. I think that Benjamin Franklin, although on the surface you can look at it from a one dimensional view, I think it has you know, a, a, a multi-layer view when you actually understand history and you actually understand how governments can be dangerous when they start to manipulate you to hand over your rights rather than them taking it by force. And that's exactly what's happening in Australia. So it's, you know, you've got to stand up for the freedom that we do have left, the little freedom that we do have left, because each and every day, especially from the, what the last two weeks have told me, it's going very quick. Uh, I think that, like, the feds and ASIO are like gods and should be treated as such. They should be immune to all the laws, for starters. Secondly, if any of you decide to delete or modify any of my homemade pornography, mate, they'll be hell to pay. 
And I think maybe they should jail journalists and whistleblowers. Get rid of all them bloody journalists. Why doesn't the government just set up their own news service so Tony can give his stamp of approval on everything we hear and see? I think that'd be better. Good on you, Tony. Give it your rubber stamp, mate. I think you need to act smart about this. Um, and um, yeah, I, 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 what, what NSA proved was that you know they were doing this outside the courts. They were doing this without uh, any uh, approval uh, from anywhere. And I, I absolutely disapprove of that. Uh, and you'll see often that there's a claim that there's a threat and that will scare people enough to kind of give up on their private, um, their, their right to privacy. But personally, uh, I don't know if this relates to what you're doing at all. My, my personal concern is actually more with what social media are doing. Uh, they, they have, they know everything about me uh, and I don't remember or I never, I don't know, like everyone else, I don't read the terms uh, that they give me. And apparently I'm giving up my entire private life uh, without knowing. People have got to a point where they've just given up um, and they, things have got so bad as far as economics and what's going on that people just are thinking to themselves um, what can I do I'm only one person but we're in the majority the, the public are in the majority and if the public get together and make their voices heard then um, we're quite capable of changing um, the situation. The only thing I'd like to say is thank you to the few senators and the few people from the House of Representatives that did oppose this law and did try to debate it, people like Scott Ludlam, the, the, the few independents from, uh, from the House of Representatives, the one lone Labor MP that was there, you know, questioning these laws, the very few politicians that actually stood up for my rights, that were my voice. In, in you know in these levels of government i'd like to say thank you to you that you know there are people out here that do appreciate what you've done um, but my message is simply to the people because it's not to the politicians anymore it's to the people it's to the people to say we're in trouble we are in trouble and uh, for the first time in my life i've actually been concerned because I've you know the, the, the puzzle pieces are starting to come together now and if you study history if you I implore everyone to study history to understand how free nations become controlled we are following the exact same path. What is your message to Australian politicians about these new anti-terror laws? I think they're great I think you should bring in more laws to keep us safe and I don't know what the Australian public would do without you thank you I love politicians my message is more to the, the people of Australia rather than the politicians because they're being controlled. Um, what we need is every, every person here to do something. I mean, they're not going to change their minds. They don't even listen to the people anymore. I mean, like, you be part of a demonstration and... Um, well, I've been part of demonstrations, but um, their, their, part, their reply is, you're not representative of the majority, they just don't even listen anymore. You know, whereas before in the 70s and that, they actually listened to the people. At the moment, they're not even listening. People need to understand, it's not their police that are the enemy. The police are one bounce check away from being with us too. Don't divide yourselves amongst each other, whether it's Muslim and white, whether it's police and citizens. We're all in this together. The real enemies are the ones that are behind the curtain, the, the ones that are behind Parliament, even, even in Parliament now, because they're the ones that are influenced by the corporations. Understand that they are the enemy and that no matter what happens, we need to continuously remember that. So I do believe that a police state is un unravelling in, in this beautiful, you know, we may not be able to stand here in a couple of, of months, you know. So I'm definitely concerned about it and I want to get the word out as much as I can before this happens. Government sponsored news, I think that's the future. Yeah, you can trust your government, you know that. Ozzy Beast TV.